In this video, I'm going to show you four perspective drawing techniques that are useful to know when drawing in perspective. We will start by looking at how to divide a rectangle in perspective. Here I draw out a flat two dimensional plane and then next to this I will draw out a plane in perspective and I can demonstrate this technique on the flat plane first and then show you how the same can be done in perspective. To find the centre of this plane I take two diagonal lines from corner to corner and where they intersect will be the centre. At this point I am able to draw in a vertical and horizontal halfway line. The same technique can be applied when drawing in perspective. Here I draw in the intersecting diagonal lines to find the centre and then I can draw in the vertical halfway line and the horizontal halfway line. And because we are drawing in perspective here, this line will also be converging to that right vanishing point. When creating a drawing, this technique will allow you to divide rectangles in your drawing to then find the centre and draw in the halfway lines. Here I am drawing a house and I divide up this front and back plane to then extend up a line in the centre that will be the top of a pitched roof. I take a line from the top of that back to the vanishing point and then extend the centre line at the back up to that. I finish this pitched roof by taking lines from each corner to the top of this. I also use these divisions to help me draw in this door that is positioned at the centre along with a window that is also central on the side here. You can also divide up sections further, repeating the technique in smaller sections, creating more dividing lines that can then be used to evenly divide the spaces you are working with. Now let's take a look at how to multiply rectangles in perspective. Here I have what I had drawn previously when showing how to divide them up. Now once you have it divided up like so, you are able to use these divisions to multiply this rectangle and create another one that is identical in size. This technique firstly involves extending the top and bottom lines of the rectangle in the direction where you want to draw another. You then take a line from the far bottom corner through the point in which that halfway line meets the side of the rectangle and then you continue to extend this until it meets that top line. At this point you are then able to draw in the side of your multiplied rectangle. Here let's do the same with the plane in perspective. I have this rectangle divided up already and I also have extended the top and bottom lines. Here they converge to that right vanishing point. So now I take a line from the bottom corner through that point in which the halfway line meets the side of the rectangle and extend this until it meets that top line. Here I now draw in the side of my duplicated rectangle. You can see here how this one appears shorter in width and this is due to foreshortening and that's why these techniques are essential. You are able to multiply space accurately in perspective. I'm going to use this example again but here I will draw another house of the same size next to it. Now I want there to be a space between these houses and here this space can be the same size as one of the houses. Here I divide up this plane I am multiplying and use the technique to multiply the same plane in this direction. I also do that once more to create another plane and it's this one that I will then use to construct another house. I construct this house the same as before and again this house appears smaller due to foreshortening. Everything diminishes in size the further into the distance it is. You'll find yourself relying on this technique a lot when drawing. It's good to be able to know how to accurately divide and then multiply space in perspective. Seen as the whole point of drawing in perspective is to create a realistic sense of space. It's one of the most useful techniques I know. I'll add some bolder outlines around what I've drawn here so that you can see it clearly. So everything appears smaller the further into the distance it is and the same applies when drawing in perspective. Here I will show you how to scale objects that are at the same size in your drawing. To do this I will firstly need to draw in the horizon line. If you are watching this and are not sure what the horizon line is then do consider watching my perspective drawing series as I explain everything more in depth. The next step is to find something that you want to scale in perspective. Here to show this technique I will draw a simple vertical line. 
Now let's say I want to place another one of these lines at the same height further into the distance here. One thing I need to consider is the fact that the line will appear smaller the further away it is. I firstly need to find a point where I want this new line to be. Here will be fine. I then create a point which will be the bottom of this new line. The next step is to take a line from the bottom of the first one through this point and extend this until it meets the horizon line, creating a vanishing point. I now take another line from the top of this first one to that vanishing point on the horizon line. I can now draw my line from that point I made up until it meets this line. Now in my drawing, this line that I have just drawn is at the same height as the first one, it is just further back into the distance. But what if I wanted to draw another line that is at the same size somewhere else? Well, you can do the same again, except this time I can use any of these two lines I now have to scale another. If I want another one directly to the side of this one, I can easily draw this in by simply extending lines across from the top and bottom of it. If I want to draw another line further back, I can easily do so by again finding a point in where I want my line to be, then taking a line from the bottom of an existing line through this point until it meets the horizon line. I can then draw another line from that point on the horizon to the top of the existing line and draw in my new line. I'll even draw one further up to the front here, and this one will appear larger. So this technique is very simple, but it's also very useful. Here I will create an example showing you how this technique can be used when drawing. Here I am drawing a simple house again, this time in one point perspective. I draw out its front plane and divide it up like so. I draw in the pitched roof and then take some lines back to the vanishing point. So I have this house drawn out and now I want to draw another one of these houses further back into the distance and I want them both to be the same size. We know how to scale the height of the house but we also need to work out the depth of the house and so I firstly start by deciding where I want this new one to be and I will create a point like so. This will be the bottom of the left side and so I take a line from that point on the existing house through this point until it meets the horizon line. Now that point on the horizon line, which in this case is off the page, is going to be the vanishing point I use to scale the dimensions from this house. So here I take a line from each of the bottom corners of this existing house to that newly created vanishing point and now I can draw in the bottom plane of this new house. I do this by using the central vanishing point as before, taking a line from the first point I made to it and seeing where it intersects these lines heading to that other point. Where these do intersect is where I draw in the bottom plane, and this will be the same size as the house further up front. It just appears smaller because again it is further into the distance. So now we have established the depth and it's a case of scaling the height of the house. This can be done the same way. I take lines from the top of each line on the existing house to the vanishing point and then I can draw in my lines from the corners of this base up until they meet these lines. Now I can finish constructing this box like so, and finally I need to add the pitched roof. I divide up this front and back plane and transfer the height of the pitched roof across. I can then draw in the vertical halfway lines and extend them up until they meet these lines. I now draw in the pitched roof and I have successfully drawn another house that is at the same size, except it is further into the distance. Again, I will add a bolder outline around this so you can see it clearly. Sometimes all of these construction lines can be overwhelming. Now let's take a look at how to draw ellipses which will then allow us to draw some cylinders. Here again I have a flat two dimensional plane and a plane in perspective. Except these are not rectangles this time, they are square. And we need them to be square because the best way to draw a circle is to do so within a square. So it makes sense that the best way to draw an ellipse, which is a circle in perspective, is to do so within a square in perspective. So how do you go about drawing ellipses? Well let's start with this flat plane here and I am going to divide this up like so and then these divisions will be used to assist me when drawing in my circle. For this example I will use a compass in order to draw the perfect circle. Now before we draw an ellipse let's just take a look at what we have here. 
a circle within a square. Notice how the circle is tangent with the surrounding square and that its center point is also the center of the square. Now we want to draw this in perspective. So here I have my square in perspective and I divide this up again. And once I have these dividing lines, I can use them to help me draw in this ellipse. Obviously you can't use a compass to draw in ellipses. So instead you are tasked with drawing these in freehand, unless you have an ellipse template. But most of the time you will be drawing them in like this. And it can be challenging to draw in ellipses correctly, but with practice, it does get easier. Again, do consider watching my perspective drawing series because I cover them there. So if you can draw ellipses, then you can also use them to draw cylinders, as a cylinder has an ellipse on either side. Now you might have guessed already, because the best way to draw an ellipse is to do so within a square in perspective, the best way to draw a cylinder is to do so within a box in perspective. Here I draw out a rectangular box in two points perspective. Now I will divide up both sides of the box like so, I can then use these dividing lines to help me draw in an ellipse at either side. Once you have two ellipses you are happy with, you can join this up to form a cylinder. If you know how to construct boxes and cylinders, you'll be able to draw almost anything in perspective. So there we go, that's four useful techniques that you can put to use when drawing in perspective. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.